Today we'll be talking about scrutinizing the skeptics. Are what they say always the truth? Do they have their own confirmation bias? Let's find out. In October of 2017, Joe Nickel wrote an article in the Skeptical Inquirer entitled, Bigfoot is Big Myth, Seven Phases of Myth Making. In that article, there are several items that we would like to share and if it stands to scrutiny. In the article, Nickel stated, in 1958, a Sasquatch seemingly made several visits to a road construction site, at Northern California's Bluff Creek. Its tracks were discovered by a bulldozer operator, Gerald Jerry Crew, a photo of whom, holding up a cast of a giant footprint, was spread by a wire service across the country. Consequently, the name Bigfoot, which first appeared in the Humboldt Times on October 5, 1958, began to become widespread, the family of Bluff Creek Road contractor Ray Wallace informed the press, after Wallace's death in 2002, that he had faked the 1958 tracks. They even produced pairs of carved feet that matched the Bluff Creek tracks. But, if you closely look behind me, at the carved feet, and the 1958 Jerry Crew cast, you will see they look nothing like the carved feet that the Wallace family had found. So, why does Nickel state, in his article, the family had produced pairs of carved feet, that match the Bluff Creek tracks, when they obviously do not? And, they don't seem to match the other tracks found at Bluff Creek by Bob Titmus or Roger Patterson, either. In reference to the famous 1968 Patterson-Gimlin film, Nichol stated, as it happened early in this century, a Patterson acquaintance named Bob Hieronymus, confessed it was he, who had worn the eight-man suit, and others corroborated Hieronymus as having had such a costume at the time. Wait right there, Mr. Nichol. There was no corroboration, as in Hieronymus's original story he stated he had only show this alleged suit to his mother, who had passed before he confessed to this. Only after several months had passed after confessing did his story change to showing patrons in a bar room. So, even if someone did come forward, which I have found no reference to, it tends to be rather dubious, since the original claim by Hieronymus, had changed. When talking about the Patterson-Gimlin film, Nickel comes up with an anthropologist's opinion, rather than fact. Nickel writes, quote, The Smithsonian Institution's John Napier analyzed the film frame by frame and concluded that the figure's walk was consistent with that of a man striding in exaggerated fashion, end quote. Now mind you, Dr. Napier was leaning towards the existence of Bigfoot. However, the stronger point in the same analysis about the Patterson-Gimlin film, which he was suspect of, was, the creature was not anatomically correct for a primate. The creature had breasts which is a female characteristic, yet it had a sagittal crest which is, a male characteristic. The rest of Nichols' article is basically on point, but fails to find the real reason for the skepticism. In his article he writes, more than a thousand tracks were left in 1969-1970 at Bosburg, Washington. Some were ostensibly, made by a creature, with a congenitally deformed right foot. A Bigfoot-believing anthropology professor, the late Grover Krantz, asserted with hubris, this requires an expert anatomist with a very inventive mind, more so than me, and I seriously doubt that any such person exists. Anthropologist, David J. Daigling observes, that templates for Bigfoot tracks, both normal and deformed, were available in dozens of textbooks and has stated all a hoaxer had to do was have the wherewithal, to scale them up, and he or she did not need to know one iota of anatomy to do so. Excuse me? Did he say Bigfoot tracks in textbooks? What textbooks? The more reasonable and realistic skepticism is the fact that despite Renata Hinden usually being the main character in the discovery of the Bosberg tracks it wasn't he who found them initially. As Don Hunter writes in his book co-written by Renata Hinden, Sasquatch, De Hinden's driver told him to wait in the car, as he wanted to check an area. When the driver returned he led De Hinden to the discovery of what has become to be known as the Bosberg cripple foot. The driver De Hinden speaks of was none other than, Ivan Marks. The same man, who tried to pass off, horrible Bigfoot films of a limping Sasquatch, alleged to be the cripple foot. At one time Marx tried to get researcher Peter Byrne, to pay him the 1971 price of $25,000 for the footage. The fact, that it was Marx, who discovered the cripple foot tracks, sets off huge flags about the track's authenticity. No writing endeavor, is free of some sort of bias, angle, or point, after all, it is a picture you are going to paint. 
when investigative journalism comes in with not knowing all the facts, and having a biased approach, it sometimes makes it difficult, to discern between fact, and opinion. In this case, Mr. Nichols' article was written for the skeptical inquirer. Should we as Bigfoot researchers, expect a positive article? Of course not. Fact is, here, we look at all the facts, and yes we do have a little bias that the hairy ones do exist. However, what I don't have a bias towards, are claims people make, and evidence they provide. That needs to be looked at with a high degree of healthy skepticism and at the same time keeping an open mind. Never throw away the science book, or the rules of investigation, and be self-aware of any bias you may have. And remember, a con, is a slang term for confidence scheme. Nasty people don't pass off hoaxes very easily, folksy people like Ivan Marks do. Be sure to tune into Squatch DTV Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern. We kindly ask you to, like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching, till next time.